Yo, what's up guys, Stanitech here, and welcome to my first English video. I hope you will enjoy it. Today we will be taking a look at the Intel Core i7 A70 CPU, a $500 LGA1156 socket CPU. Can it still play games today? Let's find out. So this CPU was released all the way back in 2009, when I was 13 years old. And before you comment down below, where is the Core i7 860? Don't worry, you can pretty much take this CPU as the 860, as the only real difference is not only the price, obviously, it's $170 cheaper than the 870, but it also is clocked only 133 MHz slower, which should be very negligible when it comes to real-world performance. This also marks the first ever mainstream Core i7 CPU, but it's not the first ever. That will be for the Core i7 920 and 965 Extreme Edition on the LGA 1366 socket. But let's have a quick look at the specs. It has 4 cores, 8 threads, was released back in September 2009. It had a base clock speed of 2.93 GHz and a turbo clock up to 3.6 GHz. It had 8 MB of cache and it had a TDP thermal design power of 95 watts and it was based on the 45 nanometer Linfield architecture. One of the cool things about these old CPUs, especially from Intel, is unlike Phenom 1 and Phenom 2 CPUs, is that they still have the latest instruction sets that are required for newer games, such as Red Dead Redemption 2 and the newer Call of Duty games. But in not chatter, let's get into the test setup and some benchmarks. So today I'm using the ASUS P55ED motherboard with 8GB of DDR3 memory as that was a little bit more common at the time, unlike 16GB. And we're also using a GTX 970 with a custom BIOS so it runs at around 1450MHz which is a very common thing to see on these manual OC GTX 970s. We are using the latest update from Windows 10 as 2H20 as of recording this video. And we will also do a quick overclock on the CPU. Yes, there was the time when you didn't need the k SKU CPUs to overclock. You basically just turn the base clock speed on the motherboard and that was it. I was able to achieve 4 GHz out of this puppy, so let's get into some benchmarks. First off, let's start with some Cinebench R20, where honestly it doesn't look so great comparing to much newer architectures, to be fair, it is a pretty old CPU by modern standards. However, when we started overclocking it, we got over 20% higher performance. But Cinebench doesn't really tell the whole story, so let's get into some games. Let's start off with a legacy title, Battlefield 4, which is usually not really regarded as CPU heavy as at the time, you really didn't need anything more than 4 cores and like 3 GHz clock speed anyway. So running stock, it was running at 91.3 FPS average with a 1% low of 53.8. However, overclocked to 4 GHz, I got it to 92.2 FPS average and a 1% low of 57.8. Let's do some more demanding titles, starting with GTA 5. Here we are running at about high-ish settings at 1080p, and on stock performance it was running at 80.1 FPS average with a 1% low of 49.4. However, when we started overclocking it to 4 GHz, it was running at 97.7 FPS average with a 1% low of 61.1. Regardless if you overclock it or not, it was a very smooth experience. Moving on to Red Dead Redemption 2, which is not that CPU heavy actually, it's way more heavy and taxing on the GPU, but it does favor a newer architecture in terms of CPUs and RAM and such. However, we didn't really gain much as we were looking at 47.4 FPS in averages and a 1% low of 35.1. And overall, when I started overclocking it, we barely got an extra FPS out of it, so that was pretty much just a tie. That also means that we can technically upgrade the graphics card even further and still not get a technical bottleneck out of this system. Moving on to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019, which until very recently was the newest Call of Duty available. Regardless of if you overclock it or not, it shouldn't really matter because the average frame rate at medium settings in 1080p resolution, if I remember right, was at 90.5 FPS and a 1% low of 57.2. 
and overclocking it we got less than 10% improvement overall so it was not really worth spending the extra time, voltage, heat and noise to get that 4 GHz clock speed but that also means that the CPU is perfectly capable of running a game that was literally released like what 10 years and 2 months after this CPU. Very impressive. And last but certainly not least, we have Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, which I have personal experience that it can be a little bit too taxing on the graphics card and RAM, not so much on CPUs, however it does definitely play well with 8 threads. Here at stock performance with medium settings at 1080p resolution, it was running at 57.7 FPS average with a 1% lower 31.6. However, overclocked, it, we did actually start to see a bit of a performance increase as it was increased to 66.1 FPS average with a 1% lower 35.1. Overall, it's a borderline when it comes to the graphics card, but as you hopefully can see in the footage, you will see that the CPU is still perfectly capable when playing this game. However, I will recommend that you probably turn down a few more filters and perhaps the texture quality as the game can be quite GPU intensive, so if you actually want to play it like this, I will definitely recommend turning down the graphics even further down, especially if you want to play multiplayer, as this game is a very fast paced shooter game. So there you have it, how is the Core i7 870? Well, if we also account for the 880, 875K and the 860, uh, just the 800 series in general, I really think that it is still a perfectly capable CPU for most games today. Obviously, you will never ever reach like a 10900K or 5950X in terms of CPU performance, but for a slightly cheaper alternative, well not slightly, it is factually a very very much cheaper platform to start your gaming adventure on, it's a pretty damn good CPU. But there is a hidden cost to all this, and that is the cost of the CPU, which is not that much, especially for the 860, I see it around for very reasonable prices on eBay. However, the motherboards can be very very expensive, we are talking sometimes over a hundred dollars just for the motherboard alone. So you can easily get it up to, what, 150 bucks just to run on the first generation mainstream Core i7 CPU. That makes it a slightly tough sell because for 150 bucks, I mean maybe 170 perhaps, you can get yourself a Ryzen 3100 and a B450 chipset motherboard and maybe, just maybe, with a touch of luck, you can get 8GB of DDR4 3000 to 3200 MHz RAM for the 172 less than 200 bucks. And that CPU will run not only much cooler, much quieter, take up less power, you get more modern features such as M.2 SSDs, DDR4 technology, much more advanced VRM. There is a lot of things going on that makes it a little bit tougher to justify. In terms of graphics card recommendations, it really depends though. I think personally a GTX 970 is a very good pairing for the Core i7 870 and 860, especially running at stock speeds. However, if you do get a, let's say, a 3.9 to 4.2 GHz clock speed, I would say that you can actually step it off all the way to a 1066 GB, a GTX 980, an RX 580 8 GB, and so on. Around there, I would say that is the sweet spot for how crazy you can go with this setup. Keep in mind that this CPU is over 11 years old. So there you have it, I hope you enjoyed my first English video ever, at least the first intentional one. Like the video if you loved it, dislike if you didn't, subscribe today if you want to see more, and check out my Discord and my Facebook page, those are linked in the, the description. And with that being said, I'm out of here.